Children's Hospital in Portland. We appreciate the community support through this event and other donations. First off, I'll be one of your MCs tonight, and I'd like to introduce my other MC, Emily McNichol. Emily is heavily involved here in student leadership as well as golf and the dance team. Next year, Emily will be attending Oregon State University to study business. Standing next to me is Steve Prescott, who is president of both Model UN Club and Band. At the end of the school year, Steve will be enlisting in the United States Air Force. Also, Steve was voted as the most attractive senior at, at this school. He has a 4.0. He's his parents' favorite child. He was a diversified stock. Wait, who wrote this? Hey, let's meet our judges for the night. Tonight, they're going to be scoring our contestants on the following criteria. Self-expression during the bio, self-expression during the dating game, swimwear, and talent. The X factor tonight will be how much money each contestant raised this week for Dornbecker. During our pageant here tonight, they will have one last opportunity to raise funds during our Dash for Cash. Donate to your favorite contestant to help them win. Our first judge, Miss Anderson, is one of our health teachers at the high school, as well as coaching the golf and basketball teams. Leading the golf team to win their first state champion this year. I was included in that team. <laughs> During, during the off season, Miss Anderson enjoys synchronized dolphin swimming. Joining us from our administration staff is Miss Gregg, one of our assistant principals. When asked what her summer plans were, Miss Gregg said that she will be playing the ukulele on the beach. Judge is Sean J. Williams, one of our beloved instructional assistants. Just yesterday, Sean J. shaved his head in solidarity with children cancer patients. <laughs> when asked what his favorite pastime is, Sean J. said he enjoys hula dancing and fire eating with his family. Now let's get this show on the road, huh? First off, we're going to play the dating game. But before that, we got to meet our contestants, right? Starting off, Drake Carter, a world-class playboy and part-time special agent. Drake was the first in 30 years in a cryogenic freeze to match wits with his nemesis, Dr. Deer. Possessing antiquated spy skills and odd mannerisms from the 80s, Drake must confront a villain and try to win Mr. Wildcat while making peace with his out-of-date swinging personality, Drake Carter. Please welcome Dom and Body. Brought up in the cornfields of Hubbard, Oregon, this young lad is the thickest in all the land. Hotter than a goat's coat in a pepper patch and as strong as an ox, his southern charm will definitely woo our Yankee spirits. When he was just a young sprout in the field of life, only knee-high to a grasshopper, Dominic could hit a baseball a quarter mile and bail hay faster than you could say yee-haw. This beefcake believes that he has worked hard enough to win this prestigious Mr. Wildcat Award. And now, Mr. Connor Neville. Born in Colorado, Connor was abandoned by his family and left to die in the dangerous mountains. He quickly adapted to his new lifestyle, being taken under the wing of a family of wild cougars. One day, Mother Cougar was being attacked by a bear. In what seemed to be like her final moment, Connor picked up a rock and threw it at the bear's head and killed it. 
The football gods recognize he used his power for good and blessed him with free tuition at WSU. Vote for this courageous, honorable man. Here comes Harrison Steiger. Growing up in Wilsonville, Harrison did not fit in very well. Ancient folklore claims his great-great-grandpa was in fact a wildcat who grew up in the mountains of Scotland. With the wildcat blood in his body, he began growing a tail and whiskers. But in order to fit in and be eligible for sports, he had them removed. He longed for opportunities to express his inner wildcat, and now he finally gets his chance. And now, please welcome Jake Gibson. Born in the Shire countryside, young Gibson has lived the blissful life of a hobbit. With ambitions of leaving the Shire for Wall Street, Jake works tirelessly to win Mr. Moneybags. Standing in a mighty five foot six inches, it is quite possible for him to pull off the feet. To bring joy to his fellow hobbits back home, Gibson must win Mr. Wildcat, so get out there and vote. Here is Ian Locke. He may have been born in the 90s, but his heart belongs in the 80s. He perfected his mullet by the age of eight and clearly understood business in the front, party in the back. His profession, NASCAR driver. He drives the number 10 car. His favorite thing to eat is old cheeseburgers and french fries. And finally, Timothy Thomas, born from a tribe deep in South America. He can speak Spanish in English. He gave his father the talk. A bird in his hand is worth three in the bush. Bigfoot once tried to get pictures of him. If opportunity knocks and he's not there, opportunity waits. He once had a staring contest with his own reflection, and he won. Vote for the most interesting man in the Ville, Timothy Thomas. Okay, now the rules for this game. We're waiting for Harrison. You need a chair. No, you don't. All right, so this is the dating game. We're going to go down the line asking each contestant a question. We will ask all the boys a different question. And after we finish, the mystery girl will pick the right boy for her. For a mystery girl, we have a real cougar here tonight. Let's meet her. Come on, mystery girl, come on out. A little stage fright tonight. There she is. is it, doesn't she look pretty tonight? Contestant number six. What is your idea of a romantic evening? Okay then, contestant number three. What is your idea of a perfect life? Well, I mean, just dropping a couple tracks in the studio. Um, you know, uh, you know, fantastic. Contestant number four. How do you freshen up for a date? Uh, if you haven't seen my commercials, I uh, use Old Spice uh, in the shower. 
Contestant number seven. What is your favorite talk type of dog and why? Uh, I like my two Chinese pugs. One name is Pound Cake, the other Muffins. So that's what I prefer. Fantastic. Contestant number two. What do you see in a perfect woman? I see a uh, pretty good mustache and a girl who can put a burger away in under five minutes. <laughs> and finally, contestant number one. Were you to win this date, what would you cook for a romantic dinner? I'd probably cook some uh, GMO-free kale, dude. And then some guazel nuts, dude. Oswald did it, dude, lone shooter. Fantastic. And contestant number five, do you do any home improvements? Well, as most of you know, I spend a lot of time on a wrecking ball. So naturally, I do a lot of home improvements. Definitely. Now, mystery girl, it's time to narrow your choices down to your top four. Who's going to survive the chopping block? Well, I don't like pugs so much. I do like kale. Okay. Number five. He's so cute, he sounds dead. Number seven. Number one. And number three. So, so let, me, let me ask you, how are you feeling about these, uh, these choices so far, these contestants? Oh my stars, they're just gorgeous. And they sound so nice. They could rub the corns on my feet. Change me periodically. A lot of things. They're so good. Can I just say you're the sunniest part of my day today? <laughs> so now let's hear some more from the bachelors we have left. Contestant number three, do you believe in love at first sight? Well, of course, you know, uh, when I seen a little shoddy in the club, you know, it just makes you want to write a couple albums about her. Contestant number one, what is your idea of a perfect marriage proposal? Probably going up to the San Juans, dude. Got a house up there, dude. Gwenlandia, dude. Fantastic. Contestant number seven. What's your ideal evening at home with the family? Uh, my ideal uh, evening at home with the family is probably eating some Twinkies, having a couple marshmallow fights, maybe pulling out the old Nerf gun. You know, <laughs> just having a good old family fashion. Contestant number five, what did you do over Memorial Day weekend? Uh, well, first, I hopped up the plane at LAX, and then I uh, partied in the USA. Awesome. Fantastic. So, mystery girl, the moment has come. Which contestant will you choose? Oh, they're all so cute. Um, I like the guy who says dude all the time. I love being called dude. <laughs> I gotta go with number one. Congratulations to contestant number one. Come on over and meet your date. You two are going to enjoy an all-natural, GMO-free, organic, paleo, vegan, pita-approved meal centered around the world-famous Gwazel Nuts. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Next up, these boys will show you what they got. During this segment, the boys will strut their stuff in their best swimwear. This is sure going to be entertaining. First off, we have Ian Locke wearing a hot pink Hollister shorts, a Hawaiian t-shirt, and flip-flops. They need to practice their quick changes. <laughs> Let's go talk to the audience. What's your name, ma'am? Carol. <laughs> Carol? I'm Steve. But I, we announced that. Did you not remember? Carol's not paying attention, guys. <laughs> if you could have picked one of those, those fine bachelors, who would you have picked and why? Oh, my gosh. 
It would have to be Timothy Thomas. Timothy Thomas. Yeah. You, can, we, can, we, can we get a Y? Because he's my grandson. Uh, he's a, that's very cute. That's very good. Thank you very much, Carol. Who else? Who else? Who's feeling talkative today? She's avoiding eye contact. I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Pardon me, gentlemen. Kara? Not Carol, that's her. Kara, which would you have picked? Um, I don't know, what was the, the guy, like the Frenchies? Drake. Was the she was paying attention too. Drake, you said. Drake, wait, can you tell me why? Because I like pugs or Frenchies too. All right, it was the accent that did it for you, right? The accent, it was really fantastic. Gentlemen, are we ready for to chill off some swimwear? Yes, we are. I hear it from Emily. All right, Emily, take it away. So first off, we have Ian Locke. Ian is wearing hot pink Hollister shorts, a Hawaiian shirt, and flip-flops. And here comes Dom and Buddy, wearing teal shorts, a white tee, flippers, and a swim cap. wearing shark printed shorts, a red and white button up shirt, and some slides. And now Drake Carter wearing Olympic skier printed shorts, a Hawaiian shirt, floaties, and an extra layer of sunscreen. Next up we have Jake Gibson. Wearing the Gibson brand dad apparel. That's trademarked. And now, Timothy Thomas wearing Goldilocks shorts and a button up shirt. Last but not least, we have Harrison Steiger wearing a pink crop top life preserve with purple and blue shorts. gentlemen don't go change yet right now we're gonna do our dash for cash as we talked about before the X Factor for tonight <laughs> okay for tonight is how much cash each con each contestant gets for Dornbecker so get out your wallets give your favorite contestant a shot at winning as well as helping out the kids in need All right, gentlemen, ready, set, go. All right, and Harrison gets out there first. He's hitting up that front row. Okay, but there goes Connor Neville hitting up the back, the unscouted territory. Dominic Enbody's hitting up his family. I think that's cheating. They are going crazy. Ian Locke is going into the row. Timothy's hair is bouncing like something else. Drake seems to be stuck in the middle of a row. We're still going. We're hitting up the sound, guys. We're hitting up the text now. Sorry, folks, I don't have any cash. Okay, let's get those contestants back on the stage. Good work, boys. Thank you for all your donations. While they get ready for the second act and we count the money, we'll take a 10 minute intermission and we'll see you in 10. But don't forget to go out to the commons and vote for the sexiest legs. It's your last chance. Let's see those legs, boys. Something to think on.
Hello, and welcome to the Wilson Hill Broadcast Network. We're an all-inclusive multimedia club built on the philosophy that students should be given an opportunity to develop skills in journalism and broadcasting. I'm proud to be a part of such a determined school organization that has high ambitions to connect with the students at Wilsonville High School in the surrounding area. Within this club, students will be asked to use brand new technology to learn about the process of producing and editing film. Students will also be able to write for our newspaper and publish articles on our website. To join our club, reach out to your English teacher, administrator, counselor, a current member, or you can visit www.wilsonvillebroadcastnetwork.com slash start for more information. Wilsonville Broadcast Network, bringing the news back to Wilsonville High School. Hello, and welcome to the Wilsonville Broadcast Network. We're an all-inclusive multimedia club built on the philosophy that students... It's 
chef who hosts a Ville's Kitchen, our very own Ian Locke. It'll open any second. There it is. There we go. Tonight you'll get to witness him mentoring two of Wilsonville's best up-and-coming chefs. Let's see it.
get a mop out on stage, please? Backstage tech. Yeah, that's nasty. Next up, in keeping with our Hawaiian theme, Connor Neville is going to perform a haka. Now, if you don't know, a haka is a Polynesian war dance. It's an islander war dance. Uh, yeah, Connor, watch out. You're, there's, there's raw egg there. So, be prepared. This might be a little bit scary. Connor, take it away. I didn't want him to do that, but Emily just wouldn't stop egging him on about the egg thing, so clean up. All right. Next up, Mr. Dominic Enbody is going to show us his routine for getting ready for a night out. Right? And then I have two. <laughs> <laughs> Take the two, and 
And now we have Timothy and Harrison. They're going to take us on a journey through the decades of dance. Let's see it, boys. I left the city. Wow, some of those moves were really a rather painful blast from the past. So now we've got the final talent of the night setting up. He has the voice of an angel and the drum skills of a legend. Give it up for Jake as he performs Por Ti Volare.
Done here, folks. <laughs> All right, folks. You know what I have on this paper? I have the awards. That's right. Okay. Let's hear it one more time for our fantastic competitors. Come on out, guys. Come on out. All right, first off, we're gonna award the category awards and then we'll get on to uh, the Mr. Wildcat Award. These ones are voted uh, by your votes here tonight as well as the student body throughout the week. Some say that this, this first one is the most coveted prize here tonight. It is Mr. Sexy Legs. This award is based on who has the nicest legs. Let's see him one more time, boys. Oh. All right. And the winner of Mr. Sexy Legs is none other than Timothy Thomas. Okay, the next award is Mr. Moneybags. Going to the person who got the most money in their milk jugs, both during the week at school as well as the Dash for Cash tonight. And the winner is Drake Carter. And 
finally, the moment you have all been waiting for, our Mr. Wildcat, the overall best contestant, is none other than Mr. Jake Gibson. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming out this evening to help our school raise funds and awareness for Dornbecker Children's Hospital. Thank you judges for ensuring this event was honest, your time was an investment in the lives of kids fighting cancer. A big thank you to our contestants and a huge thank you to our behind the scenes crew from Leadership 1 and 2 and our MC, Steve Prescott. The, cu the custodial staff and drama department and the administrative team that continues to support our student-led events where Mr. M Wildcat went Hawaii Hawaiian. Let's give another hand for these boys. Thank you, guys. Have a good night.